this is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action, and you're listening to The Krypton Report. Up in the sky, look! It's a plane! It's a plane! It's the Krypton Report! Welcome to the Krypton Report Podcast, presented by the Southgate Media Group. The all things Kryptonian podcast, including Superman and Supergirl. We discuss games, movies, cartoons, TV shows, and comics. Krypton Report Pod can be found on Facebook, Twitter, Skype, YouTube, and Instagram. And if you want to drop us a line, send it to kryptonreportpod at gmail.com. We are on Patreon under Southgate Media Group. And our official merch page is tpublic.com. Search Krypton Report. Now on with the show. Today on Krypton Report, we are going to discuss the Superboy TV series that ran from 1988 to 1992. And I can't do this by myself because that's boring. So I had to bring my super brother, Mr. James Cole. Hey, Tyler. How's it going? It is going well, man. It is going well. 30 years since the Forgotten uh, Superboy premiered. Th- yeah, 30 years. That's that's pretty wild. So, so let's do some quick history on the Superboy TV series. And we're going to bring it back around and we're going to review the pilot episode. And we're talking this also because the DC Universe streaming service has launched. It launched on Batman Day. It's amazing. I love it. And it's awesome. We bring it up because Superboy is on there. And I think the 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 episodes, they're very golden age and episodic. There's not a lot of overarched connective story. They all kind you can kind of jump in at any point and you're not really lost. And you know, there's a lot of people who forgot this show even existed. And my one experience that I knew this show existed was because I remember watching an episode of it at my grandparents' house, the same place I used to watch Superman 4 all the time. And it stuck in my head because it was – we don't really experience this as much anymore. It was a syndicated TV series. And I don't claim to know everything about production. And it, it just, it really wasn't on any individual network. It was made and then sold to TV and they aired it on different channels when. I think like back in the day, like you had WGN, WGNT, the Paramount Network, and then they shared airspace with WB. And then eventually they kind of merged and made the CW um, to kind of solidify that channel. But it was in syndication. Um, I, I can't remember the first time I saw a Superboy episode, like specifically. Um, I just know that I saw it sometime there, you know, around five, six years old, probably, probably at my grandparents' house. But, um, I mean, I've, and I've been aware of its existence all my life, um, but yeah, I've never seen, I've never seen the entirety of it. Um, I will eventually get through it because of, um, DC universe. That way I can just pick back up wherever I left off. Um, take my time with it. Cause you can see with the pilot, it'd probably be a lot to digest. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm in season two and that's mainly because I watched season one, um, for this and I had the DVD set, okay? Let me take you back. So 12 years ago, I got off work. I went to Walmart and purchased Lois and Clark Season 1, Superman 1 and 2, and the season of Superboy um, because Superman Returns was coming out, and it was exciting because Walmart had this huge display of everything. And I did it. And I think I watched like one or two episodes of the Superboy and then kind of shelved it for years. Um, cause of course, you know, at the time Smallville was still going and 
everything, so I didn't focus on the character. Now, a little history with the character. Superboy, as exists in this series, has always had a weird history because in the, there was a comic of Superboy where we have Clark Kent as a young child doing heroic things in a costume, and it's Superman as a child. And that was Superboy. And then, when by the time this show premiered, in the comics, Superboy had been erased from continuity because they had done their crisis, and Superman... We had the John Byrne Man of Steel reboot, and Superman was never Superboy. So this show comes out, and I want to say it was produced by the Salkinds, who had produced Superman 1, 2, 3, and Supergirl. They had sold the rights to Superman to canon for Superman 4, and I'm not sure when they re reacquired them, or if they ever did, or they felt that they held on to rights or something to do Superboy. But I know that's why they used Superboy for the TV series and not Superman because it is Clark Kent and he's in college. So he's not really a boy. And it kind of always makes me chuckle when they're like, Superboy. And you're like, he's like 19. You know, like he's not really a boy. <laughs> um, so that's, what, I mean, that's some history. Um on the character, I mean, we the first incarnation of Superboy, of course, was Clark Kent as a child. We had our post-crisis Superboy during the reign of the Superman, where it was the clone, the half-clone that emerged, you know, to being the clone of, like, Superman mixed with Lex Luthor's DNA. And that's Con, or Connor. You know, that's the one that most people equated with, where eventually he, his look was the black t-shirt with the red S. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, Connell or Connor Kent. He went all the way up to the New Fifty Two. Um, he his backstory has changed a little bit in the New Fifty Two, but basically, he still was a clone. Uh, I can't remember all of it because, like, something about him being like a clone, past Kryptonian, like warrior. That's where they got the name and the term Con meant something like abomination. Or I, it was something like that. I can't remember all of it. It's been so yeah. We were yeah. We were gonna compile uh, some super boys and do a super boy episode. And we just haven't had the time. We've been busy life. And <laughs> the newest super boy is Clark C Kent's son, Jonathan. Him and Lois had a son who's half human, half Kryptonian, and it's Jonathan. And I love the character. I wish he had a different name. Like, I don't know, anything but being, I know they named him Jonathan and they named Samuel after both their fathers, but, you know, if I say Jonathan Kent, the first thing that comes to mind is Superman's dad. You know, in the Lois and Clark run, and I think maybe the beginning of Superman uh, Rebirth, they called him Jono as his nickname, um, and then that got dropped. So, I don't know. Like, I just feel like it could have been, it was kind of confusing. Um, but that's our current Superboy. You know, we're in Rebirth. Right now, he's kind of been written out of the pages of Superman the comic as he's traveling the galaxy with jor and Lois. Spoilers. So, that's a quick Superboy um, if you're curious about some of the background stuff with the, the rights, there was a great thing on AMC called Robert Kirkman's Secret Subcomic Books, and there's an episode that deals with Siegel and Schuster and how they fought once they sold the rights to Superman, how um, Siegel came up with the idea for Superboy, and that was his character, and how, you know, they got the rights back, and he was able to do that, and they used that as kind of like a loophole. Um, cause it was like a different character, but yet the same. And what was it? I, I learned recently that I told you about that, man, I, I'm so mad. I cannot remember that. The, was it the rocket ship? Oh my gosh. I'm totally embarrassed right now. 
But a, a significant part of Superman lore was first premiered in Superboy comics. And, no. and right now I cannot remember what it is. I know I, I don't think you. I was say I don't think you you shared that bit with me. I personally. posted it to our. It's been several weeks. I posted it on the Krypton Report podcast page on Facebook. Um, and I'm not. I don't. I'm gonna look for it. But it also. So stepping back. Um. There's also a lot to think about when you realize that at this time of 88, when this show started, it was one year before Batman the movie. Warner Brothers and DC were still like in negotiations for buying like everything. And that when Lois and Clark came out, that was the first time Superman was being produced and came in-house. It was the first Warner Brothers had the rights. Warner Brothers was uh, had their characters, they had purchased DC. So this was still kind of outside of their control. Mm. You know, it was still like an independent person purchasing the rights and making and using the character for DC comics. So that's kind of, you know, that's, that's deep to think about, you know? Yeah. So anyways, we've got that. Um, now we're going to jump into the pilot episode of Superboy. Now, I want to let everybody know that if you enjoy Superboy, that Sam Rizzio owns and operates the Superboy. He's changing it. It used to be the Superboy Forever homepage or Superboy homepage. Um, he's now changing it up. And it's a great resource for anything and all things Superboy. It is SuperboyLegacy.com. He said, I bought the domain. I'm still working on it. I'm going to get it out there. You can find it on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And he says, hopefully by early to mid-October, hey, um, you'll see the new page up. He also just bought a lot of the costuming and prop collections from the Superboy TV series. So that's a great little p just piece of Superman history that people overlook and forget. I mean, the show is what it is, and I still think those actors deserve some recognition for their work as the character, right along with Dean Cain and Kirk Allen, you know, and everybody else. Yeah, yeah, go down the list. <laughs> so let's jump into. No, the you're pilot. right. Uh, they they put in time, they put in the work, and uh, you know they deserve to to be recognized. Superboy pilot aired October eighth, nineteen eighty eight, and it ran for a hundred episodes. That's more episodes than Lois and Clark got. Okay, it was produced by the Salkinds. And it was filmed in Florida, Florida, where Clark, 18-year-old, roughly Clark Kent, um, played in the pilot in the first season by one actor, John Hames Newton. And then in season two and beyond, when it was later changed to The Adventures of Superboy, by Gerard Christopher. Lana, in all four seasons, was played by Stacey Haddock. And in this pilot, Lex Luthor is class president, played by Scott Wells. Lana's father is a professor who's coming to join them and teach at Schuster University. Did you catch that, James? Schuster University. <laughs> and there's also the Siegel Building. Oh, is there? Yeah. We have a new character awesome. that we meet. T.J. White, son of Daily Planet editor Perry White. Um, there's no Pete and we do in this series do get to meet mom and pa Kent. Um, so that, you know, that's kind of neat. The series, the episodes were 20 Not the minutes pilot, long, but yeah, you know, we're, we're talking about the pilot, but it's kind of, I feel like we just need to build the world a little bit cause we're not really, oh, yeah, no the whole series. And you know, it's one of those things that it's a lot of us super fans. <sighs> some of us have struggled to watch. 
But, you know, I'm a Superman fan, completist, and I've I've enjoyed in a lot of ways going back and seeing what came early on and what people worked on trying to do with what they were able to accomplish. Um, it's the same kind of, like, feelings I have towards the old Flash TV series. When you look at how minimal they were able to do things and how some of it's like you can tell they had the actor do something multiple times then just sped it up to make it look like he's doing it quickly. But the 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 thing about this, and I, I'm not 100% clear, and I watched this and then I watched, I think, the fifth episode because, let's see, the fifth episode was entitled Countdown to Nowhere. And it was supposed to be the pilot, I guess, because it showed more of like Superboy showing up for the first time. And but the series just starts. I mean, the opening starts with a theme that's kind of reminiscent of the Williams score. And then it gets into like a very 80s. Just I mean, it just starts busting 80s. <laughs> yeah, it does. But the, it is a definitive 80s Superman song. <laughs> yes, it totally is. I have that in my notes right here. Like It straight up tells you like, this is the 80s and we are going to rock the Superman. And, you know, just for a, I feel that the Clark they present in season one, I really I liked more than the Clark that we get in season two. I feel like they kind of overdo the nerdness in season two to where it's just kind of pathetic. Um And in season one, I think it's more of a believable kind of geeky, nerdy person, like a a real character where I think in season two, where I've watched this so far, he's a little bit more exaggerated, almost a character and not a believable person. Mm. But it's really hard to just talk about this one episode because it is so cut. I mean, basically, Lana's dad showing up with a jewel that he had that's cursed and bad things start happening. Um you know, Clark um, becomes Superboy to take the jewel and fly it back. And the curse is lifted. Lana's dad gets better. Um, it's it's very interesting that it's just, it's so short that there's not a lot of plot development. I mean, it's really jump in, jump out kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Clark breaks the fourth, fourth wall, looks at the camera. Which is kind of a nod back to how Superman the movie and stuff always ended where he kind of smiled and winked at the camera. Lex tries to take the, the steal the jewel. And, you know, this is 1988 and they're not really pulling from rich businessman Lex. This is kind of its own Lex Luthor. You know, he's class president. He's a bookie. He's rich somehow. He's preppy. Um, yeah, it really is its own version of Lex. I noticed that being being very preppy, being just a, a rich, spoiled brat and the class president. Um, yeah, he's just. <laughs> um, I, I like this is the only time I saw him, and you would think stealing a rare jewel like that, worth millions of dollars, like grand larceny, he'd go away. So, but I don't know. I don't know how the the rest of the season works if Lex is in it anymore or he, he appears in a couple more episodes. He's in the final episode, which is worth mentioning because it's called Lex Luthor unleashed. And it was directed by David Nutter, (laughs) David Nutter, um, who would go on later to direct the pilots for Smallville and the flash. And, I uh, can't remember if he did Arrow or not, but he did Supernatural and multiple episodes of Smallville. And he did a lot of work on Superboy, especially in season two. So he's one of the two directors who have directed different Supermen. The the other being Glenn Winter that I found so far, unless I've missed a director in Lois and Clark, who's directed uh, in other areas. Um, Glenn Winter directed in Smallville and then, of course, directed um, in Supergirl, but directed Tyler Hecklin in Supergirl. (laughs) Excellent. And then Janot Swartz directed Supergirl, the movie, and then in Smallville. So it's it's not the same, but so that's kind of just neat super trivia there about David Nutter. But um, 
You know, Clark saves the day as Superboy, and it's very kind of like, oh, okay, good job. Thanks, Superboy, you're here. Everybody <laughs> is like, wow, I'm so glad Superboy showed up. And you're just kind of like, huh, okay, cool, I'm, you know. <laughs> Everybody knows about Superboy to start. Very easy, just they already know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just jump right into it. It doesn't feel like a pilot. Like it doesn't feel like it's the first day of school. It just kind of like drops you in. And but what? I, <coughs> excuse me. What I was saying was, in season two, it's worth mentioning that the entire cast is replaced. The Lex Luthor we get in season two is supposed to be the same character that we've got in season one, but he now has a new face because of plastic surgery and everything. Hmm. And the only one that stayed was Stacy Heideck. And I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing that correctly. If not, I apologize. And she is Lana Lang. And I like her as Lana, honestly. She's probably one of the best parts of the show. I mean, sometimes her acting's a little campy, but it, you can't fault the actor for the what they're in and probably the direction they're given because you can tell that the vibe of the show is campy. You know, this is kind of the closest thing that Superman got to like a Batman 66, which is kind of the, t- the camp, but it wasn't as clever and exciting as Batman 66. It's just kind of a golly swell show, you know, but I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it's different. It's of its time. And to some people that was their first Superman. That's what they got into. Like it came out at a time, like there will be kids later on down the line that their first Superman will be Tyler. There's kids probably who their first exposure to Superman was seeing Brandon and Henry, you know, so you can't yeah. judge people's experience. Um, and I don't really have a problem with the show. It is what it is. And it's fun to watch as part of the legacy of the character. It's something different. And I, they're only 20 minute episodes. I'm looking forward to, um, watching an episode here or there and, and working on, on completing it. Yeah. I mean, it's just, you make your way, you watch a little bit here and there and you just kind of keep going with it and it's fun. I'm not saying sit down at an afternoon and binge it, but what would you give this first episode of Superboy? Like on a, on a grading rate, like we've done before with other um, series. You know, honestly, I hadn't even thought about a a rating for it. Um, I mean, the way it drops you in, how um, I think part of it's the acting, the simplicity. Yeah, um, we expect more of our stories and our our TV series and our structure. Like, it's kind of hard to think back. I mean, I feel like it's even the Adventures of Superman, which is on DC Universe has more structure, I think, in a, in a serial flow of connective story than this does. Yeah. Um, I mean, I would give it like, uh, I would probably give it around a six. It's just a, it's a middle ground show. And I just, for the pilot episode, I mean, some of the acting, some of the, um, <laughs> nonsense of danger, uh, that that it has um i mean it's not something that you like you said would sit back and binge but um i'm sure there are things down the line there are, there was moments of enjoyment that you have when you know superboy still saving the day yeah you know like, so it's fun to see the different ways they try to you know make him show his powers and some of it's kind of cheesy, but it's, it's fun. You know, it just, I think for TV and the TV in the late eighties, they did a, they did a decent job with, uh, syndicated TV, you know? Yeah. They didn't have a decent job with the flight. Yeah. I mean, you're still picking a, a, uh, you're still working with a character who can do lots of things like fly and super strength. And in the first episode, they've got magic here, you know, a curse and stuff and it affects him. So there's different, um, they, they, util- they used what they had and, you know, they, they put something together. And so you know, I feel like watching super was kind of neat in the way that it's something super related. 
that I was never c- completely exposed to and didn't have. So it's still, it's something new in a way that I get to experience that's Superman related that I haven't before. Yeah. Well, thank goodness for DC Universe because there's that. Can com, can watch the old Superman serials. Yep. So we're gonna get can into that watch now. the because <laughs> I wanted to to uh, get into that real quick was the fact that um the DC Universe we said had had launched okay and the, what it contains ah what was your found it what was, hold on what was your grade for for Superboy the pilot I give it a six I give okay it, yeah. Um, I, I agree completely with you. I found that Superboy posting I did. Um, Superboy, The Adventures, The Origin of Superboy issue featured first appearance of Jor-El, Laura Lorvon, Jonathan Kent, Martha Kent with uh, the Kryptonian Science Council. That was the first appearances of those characters because it told more of the him leaving Krypton and coming to Earth storyline that had previously been established. I knew it was something big, and I couldn't remember everything because it's late, and we always record late because that's how life is. Yes, sir. So, DC Universe, Superman-related content. I posted a huge thing on it on our page, but like James was saying, we have the Superman serial with Kirk Allen. The Adventures of Superman with George Reeves, Superboy, as established here. Mm-hmm. Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman for TV shows, I'm, movies. I'm excited to dive back in that. <laughs> <laughs> movies. Um, we have Superman the movie, Superman 2, the Richard Lester cut, Superman 3, Superman 4. Animated movies, we have... The Death of Superman, the new one that just came out, Superman Doomsday. Um, We have, you know, of course we have movies with Superman in it like Justice League versus Teen Titans, Justice League War, Justice League Doom, New Frontier, um, geez, what am I forgetting? There's Throne of Atlantis, there's, um, let's see. I'm pulling up the animated movies right now. There's the special. Oh, it's back on there now, it looks like. Yeah. All right. Totally recommend this. I'm checking it out now um, because it was on there and they took it down, but it's back. If you're a Superman fan and if you've not seen Look Up in the Sky, The Amazing Story of Superman, stop this, jump on DC Universe, watch that documentary. It is the greatest culmination of all things Superman. Except the fact that it skips over Electric Blue Superman, which I find hilarious. They have the science of Superman. Which was fun. I watched that the first night with... They the- have the Fleischer cartoons. They yes. have the Superman animated series. Justice League animated series. Yes. Uh, Legion of Superheroes, which deals with a younger Superman slash Superboy type character. Super Friends. Yes, Super Friends. And those are other things that are, are I'm looking forward to. And then Young Justice, where we have Superboy and we have uh, Superman appear sometimes. Okay, so I've watched all of Young Justice. I find I finished that whole thing. Did you get your good cry out? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. You, know, you always get a little misty when when Wally's running. We have... Flashpoint, which he's in it a little bit. Justice League Crisis right. on Two Earths. Superman Shazam, which we we will be reviewing next year as part of our look at Shazam, coming up with the Shazam movie. We've been wanting to do that for a while, but we kept putting it off because of the Shazam movie. We wanted to do that uh, close to it. So there's a lot on there. I mean, and that's not even talking about the comics, where you could just get lost in reading the comics and connecting with these characters. So I highly recommend checking out DCU. I think even – I know I pre-ordered it and everything, but I think you can do a free trial for like a week or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, it has a – from what I heard, I mean it's got a free trial. I just um, – I didn't have the $75. So I'm going to do mine month to month. 
I'll live with the seven ninety nine as opposed to the five and change. Yeah, I just but, uh, uh, I let, I talked Janine into letting me use part of my commission check. Um, right. For it. Um, but it's a it, and I heard for the seventy five dollar uh, for the year, it still is a free free trial. You get seven days free, uh, before they, you know, go ahead and charge you for whatever you're doing. But with all the content they have on DC Universe, I I watch I, I turn on DC Universe every day. Yeah, I mean Solomon and I were he likes watching Batman Beyond, and we were working on that, and. I've read comics on my television. Yep. A oh, couple just, of issues. That was pretty fun. Uh, and comics I've never read before, so it's still new to me. That's I first and, comics yeah. I dove into was Nightwing Year One and Batman Year Two. Nice. Because I well, I've always wanted to read Batman Year Two because the first issue shows him with a gun and it's the gun that killed his parents. But it was always hard to find. And I'm mm. just making my way through the different comics, and I'm trying it on different formats like on my phone. I've done it on my Roku TV, um, just seeing how it shows up on different things. And so far, everything is worth it. And if you're a DC fan, you should check it out. Now we have one more thing to discuss real quick, as this just came in as we were recording. The first behind-the-scenes Supergirl pictures of Manchester Black has been released and he looks pretty much like Manchester black except the hair um, because his hair was always purple. And of course, Manchester black is, has been cast as an African American actor. And I mean, they could have given him purple hair, but they didn't. He's got the black trench coat and the British flag t-shirt. So I'm, I'm kind of interested in seeing how they, how they do Manchester Black because that was one of the first conversations you and I had as because your first you know episode of the podcast is when you and I reviewed uh, Superman versus the Elite. Yes, it was first time we recorded. First time. We um. Yeah. So if if they're if they're able to make him even um, partway as powerful um, in Supergirl. And and half as as um, you know the ends justify the means violent and stuff um, could be could be pretty interesting. I say just go ahead and adapt the whatever happened to truth, justice, and the American way into Supergirl, much like they did, um, you know, with what do you call it the Whatever happened to the man of to no not whatever the man of tomorrow, no oh, crap. why can't I think tonight? James, help me out here, bud. Um, for the man the who, the action uh, comics for the man who yeah. has everything. No, that's what the that's what the the black. Yeah, I'm saying they they thing. adapted that in Supergirl and did a storyline based on that. Why not just do whatever? Oh yeah, with Justice in the American Way on Supergirl. Oh like, okay, yeah. Sorry, I misunderstood. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, they they did adapt that story, so it could be pretty awesome if they do adapt. Uh, you're right. Yeah, that would be an excellent episode. We and we talked, we discussed that too uh, before in an episode uh, at the end of season three when they announced a casting call for somebody uh, for Manchester Black. And yeah, we did. And my my suggestion at the time was James Marsters who played Spike on Buffy and also played the wonderful version of Brainiac on uh, Smallville and do it as he's a little an older Manchester Black who's coming you know after Superman and ends up getting ca caught in the crossfire because he's coming after Superman but wants to take his vengeance on Supergirl and uh, that was, you know, my kind of take. That way you're kind of, I mean, he if you look at Manchester Black in the comics, he looks like James Marsters. Let's be real. here, <laughs> Right. And, you know, it's kind of hawking back to, hawking, what, what word is that, Tyler? Um, calling back to previous people who have been in the DC world. 
But we yeah, have it's always there. good when they bring. It's always good when they bring. Um, keep it in the family. Well, I mean, we got uh, you know, coming this season, Sam Witwer, who was Davis Bloom slash Doomsday character on Smallville. He'll be on Supergirl, so that's awesome. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I enjoy his work. I totally love him as an actor. But we've been talking about Superboy. So what is your thoughts, dear listeners, out there who have watched Superboy? You know, I think I think it's one of those things that just holds a special place in people's hearts, much in the way that Superman 4 holds a special place in my heart. And there's nothing wrong with that. Enjoy it. Love it. I'm going to keep rocking it, you know? Look up in the sky. Look up in the sky. Look up in the sky. You can find us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook at Krypton Report. You can also email us at kryptonreportpod at gmail.com. If you get a chance to go over to iTunes, please leave us a review to help us get better. If you're an Amazon shopper, just remember you can go to southgatemediagroup.com. There's a portal log into Amazon, and you shop into your account just regular, but it also helps keep all the podcasts on and helps keep Southgate running. Remember, look up in the sky.